Oh, hey, we're back on the N64. Okay, that- Oh, no! No, you blew it up! Why would you do that? Ah, uh, curse you, Imperials. You destroyed the one thing I love. Ah, uh, the N64. All the days we had. We have to get them back. We have to avenge Alderaan. We have to avenge the N64. Hey, guys. Welcome back to uh, Comic Foil. Well, no, welcome back. This is the start of a whole new Let's Play, and we're looking at some titles here. Here we go. Factor 5. What happened to Factor 5 again? They got bought out by somebody. Um, but LucasArts and Factor 5. There isn't a LucasArts anymore. LucasArts is gone. They got eaten up by EA, I think it was. Yeah, we are here with some Rogue Squadrons and Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You know what this is? It's a hype train. Rogue One coming out uh, Thursday night, uh, Friday, Friday at midnight. Rogue One, brand new Star Wars movie. That means we're having ourselves a hype train. So welcome, we're on the N64. That is Mark Hamill there. Look at young Mark Hamill. Well, don't anymore because we started a new thing. I'm the comic foil if I didn't say that already and I got to erase a game. So we're going to erase this one because it looks pretty early on. I'm sure. Are you really sure? Yes, I'm sure. That makes the R2D2 sound whenever you do anything too. Okay, so welcome. A um, little bit about this game. I'm not going to be able to fit my whole name in here. So this is going to be... Um, yeah, that sounds good. This is going to be the comic foil. More or less. Alright, can we get our mission briefing here? Take an early morning run over Moss Eisley with Wedge Antilles, but keep your eyes open for any suspicious activity. All right, we're just doing a basic, doing a basic look around at Moss Eisley right here in Tatooine. So yeah, um, a little bit about this, why I'm doing this, why why I'm doing this game. Uh, Rogue One is coming out. It's the first ever like really pushed forward Star Wars spin-off movie. No, I guess that would be Clone Wars, um, the movie that came out before the TV show started. But, um, yeah, it's going to be Rogue One. It's going to be about the story of the team that went and got the plans for the Death Star. Uh, it looks it looks pretty cool. It's going to be about their mission, the mission that made the entire rebellion possible. But back in my day, um, this is what I knew as the Rogues. Uh, yeah, the rogues, the uh, flight teams working for the rebels. Uh, Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron here. Um, as you can see, there are different choices of ships, but we have to choose the ship that it gives us at the beginning here. Um, I was all about this game when I was younger, and I already have some stuff unlocked because of the codes that I put in. So uh, the X-Wing is the one that we're going to have to do. I can't hear anything that they're saying right now, actually, but that's the X-Wing. Oh, there's R2. Hey, little guy. You look like a little box. And over here we have the A-Wing. Um, super fast one and the speeder. That's for very specific stages, but it's kind of like a tow cable kind of thing. And the Y wing, really slow but good armor, has bombs. And the V wing. You don't. The V wing is the really cool one that you get in the last mission, and you later unlock the ability to use it in other missions. And the Naboo starfighter. I had to put in a code for that one. Um, but yeah, th this game was being developed around the same time that uh, that uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace was coming out. There's also a code for there's a code for a whole bunch of other things too. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to work on all that because there is a ton of secret ships. As you can see, it goes right over the Millennium Falcon. There, um, you can play as the Millennium Falcon if you know the code to put in. Because what kind of Star Wars flight game would this be without the Millennium Falcon? But, okay, getting the title screen. I accidentally hit A. I skipped the thing when he flew out. This is, we're just going completely off the cuff here because I'm trying to figure out how to make this cinematically cool for a video. I didn't even really get a chance to do a sync test. But Star Wars Chapter 1, doing this in the good old classic style of a Star Wars movie. I wonder if Rogue One will have this kind of opening. Huh, that's a really good question. But the Rebel Opposition, six months have passed since the Battle of Yavin. That's when the Death Star was... The Death Star has been destroyed, but the fight for freedom is far from over. So this puts us between Episodes 4 and 5. 
As the war against the Empire rages across the vastness of space, Luke Skywalker forms the legendary Rogue Squadron from the Rebel Alliance's most skilled X-Wing pilots. And gotta wait for it to scroll a little bit. Their mission, to defend struggling Rebel Alliance against a still powerful... A still powerful and battle-hardened Imperial foe in a last-ditch effort to control the galaxy. Sorry, ba shouldn't battle-hardened be hyphenated? Shouldn't that be hyphenated to be like a compound word? Eh. Eh, what do I know? I'm just a college graduate, but they like, you know, are all college graduates probably too. Yeah, LucasArts, I miss them. They made all the really good Star Wars games. Rogue Squadron is... As you'll see, it's a flight game. It is 100% flight. It had a fantastic sequel that was a GameCube launch title called Rogue Leader. And it also had a third game called, uh, I want to say Rebel Assault, Rebel Strike, um, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3. Good morning, Wedge. The rest of Rogue Squadron is still back at base, but I thought we could take an early morning run through Beggar's Canyon. So, yeah, not really doing anything right now. We're just we're just flying around. We're just hanging out in Tatooine, which is a weird place to hang out. Tatooine, I mean, they wanted to do this place because it's a super recognizable place from the movies. Imperial probe droids? What the heck are they doing here? Also, how do I... B button. Okay, B button is the fire. I had to remember. I used to... Oh, okay. I used to play this game so much, and now I don't even remember how to do anything. But yeah, gotta destroy, gotta destroy those probe droids. Get out of here. So they're they're floating around trying to gain information for something, but for what? All right, and there's one behind me. If you look in the uh, in the scanner up in the upper right, there you go. You're out of here. I'm clear, but my fighter's down. Oh, the fighter's down. They got one of my wingmen. How'd they do that? Oh man, they already took out. They already took out Weg, Wedge, or Vix, or whoever I got with me. I know it's not Biggs, because Biggs died in the Battle of the Death Star. But, you know, simple stuff flying and shooting. This is the introductory chapter, so. You see Jabba's Palace there? I think if you shoot it enough, it eventually gets destroyed. Oh, where are you? There. There's Wedge, or whoever it is, and there's a bunch of little tiny people running around. You can kind of see them. You know, N64 graphics. That looks like a nice little hut down there, some kind of moisture farm. Got to remember what all my controls are here. Um, yeah, that that puts me into the speed mode. The X-Wing fighter has its own speed mode when it boosts. Yeah, what is... What could the Empire be doing here? Um... Okay, and Z slows me down. The Z button is like the most important button in this game because you need to slow down to get targets. Oftentimes, if you're in a dogfight, what you need to do is slow down. Oh man, what are they doing? They're attacking the Jawas? Man, leave those Jawas alone. They're not so bad. Yeah, I'll attack the Jawas myself. Yeah, take that sand crawler. Okay. Alright, I've wrecked this sand crawler enough. I'm right into a scene. They're bombing the heck out of Moss Eisley. Why would they why would they do that? Okay. Oh, sorry, Jawas. I just figured out how to do the proton torpedoes though. Ah, sorry guys. Guess you won't be showing up at Jabba's party. So, we got some TIE bombers here. They're slow, but they can drop bombs, which is what's great about this level is that it doesn't actually matter how long it takes you to take these guys out. Getting some slowdown though. Oh man, I missed this but I forgot how primitive and slow the game can be when a lot of ships are on screen at the same time. But this this was it, man. This was this was in comparison a lot with um, with Star Fox 64, the other big flying game that was on the N64. It's kind of like playing Star Fox 64, but you're always in all range mode. Um, we did it. We saved my Faisley. Nice work, Rogue Squadron. We might make a name for ourselves after all. You might make a name for ourselves after all. Well, except, you know, Luke already saved saved Yavin 4 from the Death Star. He already made a pretty big name for himself. So yeah, we got a silver medal. That That's pretty good of us. Um, if I finished 
So the requirements I would have needed for a gold medal, as you can see here, um, I was seven seconds too slow. Also, I needed to have destroyed more enemies. Um, I think my wingman destroyed some of the enemies for me. And yeah, friendly saves. They blew up too many too many buildings and they hurt my one friend. My one friend got shot down because I was taking too much time figuring out the controls. But yeah, that's um that's Moss Isley. Let's let's do another one. Escort valuable rebel supplies through dangerous imperial territory over the humid lands of Barkesh. Man, I'm gonna need to get some headphones or something though, because I can the way I have my setup right now, I cannot hear them when they're giving me the ron the uh the information but yeah this is the rendezvous at, at Barkash so we are kind of just nothing huge happening we're serving the ongoing efforts of the rebel alliance and all their battles over here so here we got a really simple job we just need to make sure that the the rebel alliance that's stationed in um that's stationed on Barkash gets the supplies that it needs because they can really use those supplies so that they can keep fighting out Fighting off those gosh darn Imperials. This is the scene I didn't show you before. This is what it looks like to watch the X-Ring fighter go out. I just like knew right away though the first time to hit A because I used to play these missions so many times as a kid Rose and I'd always Squadron. skip that. This is General Riken. One of our shuttles will rendezvous with a small convoy from local resistance on Barkesh, which must first travel through Imperial territory. They carry equipment and supplies vital to the rebellion. Your mission is to rendezvous with that convoy and escort it to the landing zone. Good luck. All right, so we got to get as much of this convoy safely across the valleys. And right off the bat, we already got... We already got some probe droids. Let's bring, let's bring back memories. Pick your targets and go. Okay, so we got to get... We got to get right up to where the convoy is, though. As you can see, that orange line on the scanner. It's telling me I gotta get up there, so we're gonna get up there and we're gonna protect this convoy right off the bat. So this is it, this is the train. Those are my little guys. Little guys are getting ready, they're getting ready to go. They're running around, getting supplies. We just gotta follow this, follow this train. So, you guys are gonna have to go. All right, road group. The supply vehicles have begun moving. Their escort will follow shortly. All right, and I can see up, there he is. Okay, I gotta turn around. That's the problem with the uh, flight games, is that you're perpetually moving forward, so that can make it hard to pick your target sometimes. There we go. Couldn't quite see because of the shadows, but yeah, or orange is gonna tell me where to go at all times, and it's telling me to just stay with the train, because I don't know if the Imperials come in for an ambush or something like that. We got big, like, Mayan pyramids up in here. And oh, that's an ATST. Or chicken walkers, as we would sometimes call them. And the turrets. The turrets are, I think, what we're really going to want to watch out for. There we go. Because the turrets the turrets can mess you up. The chicken walkers, you can get pretty good if you're coming at them from the side, but... There we go. Got to aim for the head. And... Yeah, I think I remember them taking a couple passes. In the second game, your firing rate is a lot faster. Oh man, I cannot hear what these people are saying to me, though. Okay, so, um, oh, wow, that's a lot of reds. That's a lot of reds. What am I dealing with here? Oh, storm, stormtroopers. Okay, I'm gonna have to expect these guys to deal with the stormtroopers themselves, though. It's telling me to go over there, but what about all the what about all these stormtroopers though? Shouldn't <laughs> they like all do their own little variation on the Wilhelm scream when I shoot them? That's great. I like how the legs of the chicken walkers just kind of hang there too. Okay, I'm gonna leave them and hope that they turn out to be all right. They're making like they're making like crack shots at me though. I don't really appreciate that. Take out this gun for them. Good. And you're telling me to go over here. Why are you telling me to go over here? What's over here that's so important? Convoy? Huh, please. Oh, hey, guys. All right, you're flying around in my space. That's not good. But I can take out this turret before he even sees me. There we go. Great. Um... 
<laughs> I've already lost sight of where the train is, but... Okay, so I imagine this isn't the kind of stuff we're going to be seeing in Rogue One, though. Rogue One, we got a Jin Erso is the name of the character, the girl. We got another cool, strong-looking female protagonist, which is great. I like Rey in uh, Force Awakens. Um, and just kind of, we're going to have this weird band of misfits team teaming up to try and do something about, uh, yeah, to try and get those Death Star plans, because the Death Star... We, they've heard rumors. They've heard rumors of a super weapon. They don't just know about the Death Star. Nobody knew just how powerful the Death Star was until it blew up Alderaan. Get out of here. But they're already working on plans to destroy it. The convoy has been destroyed. Oh! Your mission has failed. We really could have used those supplies. Oh man, sorry guys. I let I let the convoy be destroyed. I was I was being bad. Oh, no, I failed. But I completed it in zero time. That, that's got to be a record, right? Okay, we got to start taking this seriously. Alright, let's go. Very good. Pick your target and go. Take your targets and go. Good shooting. And get out of here. Good, good. All right, I'm going to speed up and I'm going to get to the train. So I need to not pay attention to the orange and it trying to tell me where to go. I need to just stick with the train and destroy things that are directly threatening the train. It's going to tell me to keep going back to it. Um, yeah, it's going to always point me to where the train is. So I need to be watching the train to see if, if TIE Fighters or anything show up to bomb it. Yeah, but I also need to be looking up, looking out ahead of it to make sure that they're not going into the path of, you know, those turrets or those ATSCs or anything. All right, we got to provide safe transport. So, as I was saying, Star Wars. Um, Star Wars was really important to me when I was a kid. I, um, I don't know why um, my parents just decided to show me those movies. Um, I think I saw my uncle watching it at some point too, but for whatever reason, and I got into the toys. I really liked R2-D2. I had so many action figures and it was great because in the 90s, the special editions were being made. Now say what you will about those special editions, but say what you will about this chicken walker. It's got to get out of here. Um, that's what I have to say about it. Even though the special editions added a lot of, like, stupid stuff, the great thing was it was Star Wars coming out in theaters again. So besides, so even though my first experience with it was in video, I also got the joy of seeing it. <sighs> my, your, your cover's right here. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at the game now. When did I get so bad at this game? Okay. Let's do something about these chickens. There we go. Using my proton torpedoes to destroy them a little faster. They already destroyed part of the train, so that's not good. Gotta try and get as many of these supplies there as possible. And my wingmen are getting hit because these turrets are set up. This just seems like it wasn't a very good route to take the convoy. I mean, the Imperials own this valley. But yeah, so besides seeing the Star Wars movies in theaters, I also got to see them, you know, in VHS, and I would watch them over and over and over again. I think my favorite, I think my favorite was Return of the Jedi because it had the most cool aliens in it when I was little. Um, now, now I think my favorite uh, is probably Empire Strikes Back, or maybe A New Hope. Um, and then this game actually helped to. Uh, I shot a proton torpedo and I really didn't need to. Um, this game really helped reinvigorate me. I got this game because they're talking about it in Nintendo Power and I was like, oh, that sounds like the coolest thing ever because it is. Look at the like cool flips I can do and stuff. <laughs> um, Rogue Leader surpasses this game in every way. I, I, I was considering maybe playing that instead, but no, I wanted to take it all to where it all began. Um, Okay, we're going this way. I should speed up then and see where that one's going, because 
Oh, I see you guys. I see you guys there. Get out of my sky. Ah, missed. Okay. Okay, all right, all the shaking. Don't, don't bomb my stuff. There we go, just gotta line up the shots. Gotta line up the crosshairs to the ties to, oh, that's mine, that's my, that's my ship. Well, aren't you just a little engine that could going out in front of all the rest? Way to go, buddy. Um. So playing Rogue Squadron, I got really into Star Wars again, it, particularly the ships more than the characters. Um, I always liked all the tech that was in Star Wars. I learned all the names of all the different ships and what the differences in them were. And leading, this game came out just before uh, Star Wars Episode One was coming out in theaters. So, oh, who's shooting? Who's shooting? You, you, you gotta go. Sorry, my wingmen were kind of getting in my way there and that was bad, but destroy that turret too. Yeah, nobody wants you here. Uh, tie bomber. Get out of here, bomber. Get out of here, bomber man. Pretty brave coming out here all by yourself with no cover. You don't even have any regular TIE fighters to guard the bombers. This is a terrible formation. Get... Stay still. Okay, no, maybe, maybe this guy's smarter than I give it credit for because I can't... There we go. Um... And I have to say, it wasn't like Star Wars Episode One like instantly sucked. Like I didn't, we, I didn't watch it and was like, wow, this movie is terrible. It wasn't until later when I started getting critical and I started looking at it. You know, I was like 11 when Episode One came out. Um, so I mean, it was fine, even though I already knew I didn't like it as much as, um, as much as the original trilogy. The Rebel Alliance will appreciate those supplies, especially after we lost Yavin Base. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you. Okay, great. Uh, supplies dropped off. We did it. We got a bronze medal because we <laughs> um, we weren't doing great that time. Is that bronze? I have trouble telling bronze from gold. Yeah, it's bronze. Um, if I destroyed one more enemy and was a little bit more accurate, you shouldn't be just firing off random shots. It's going to hurt your chance at getting medals. Um, but yeah, more talk about Star Wars and more talk about my experience with Star Wars in the coming weeks. Next time we'll do the uh, the search for Nona. Uh, thank you for joining me for this hype train. We're just gonna... I know this one's gonna be a little less hype. It's gonna be a lot more disorganized. My, my hype trains are usually pretty disorganized, but we got four more Rogue Squadron videos coming coming at you. Just me talking about some Star Wars and, and shooting at some TIE Fighters. So I hope to see you there. This is the Comic Foil, and uh, may the Force be with you. Actually, there, I don't think there's going to be any Jedi in Rogue One, actually, but there's a guy, there's like a cool spiritual warrior guy, though, and he, like, absor observes the Force, even though he doesn't have Force powers. Uh, that That's pretty awesome. So, the Force will be with that guy, the Force will be with this movie, I trust it. The Force should be with you, too.